Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. What I have here is a few emails that I received from people uh, trying to get to them. These were written to me in May. Uh, I have some pictures that were sent with these emails so I can show you some of their fish tanks and things like that. Uh, what these emails do is they explain to you how people set up their aquariums okay uh what they did how they did it i think these are interesting because for somebody who is new to the channel which i get new people all the time <clears throat> they always ask the same question well how do i set it up or or in my country i do not have what you have in the united states or in florida and i understand that which is good that we read these because there is more than one way to skin a cat and as you notice that when I've done my videos, let's say with uh, Brazil, for example, um, how people run plenums differently than the way maybe the plenums that were in the fish stores that I showed you in Texas. And a lot of people, some people have made mention that, well, it seems like their bubbles are uh, faster than the bubbles that were in Brazil, how they were running their plenums. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. And on a second hand, if you have a, um, a high turnover rate, like the fish store, for example, in Texas, and they're running their plenums faster and everything, they're running it for biological purposes. No different than a sponge, okay? And because the water is constantly being exchanged, probably through a uh, system, a complete system, which we can see, if you look at the photographs of my last video, you'll see at the very bottom of the tank, they'll have strainers and stuff. Well, that's probably to empty out the water, exchange it for new water. So, of course, they're not too worried about running a plenum to make anoxic conditions. They're running a plenum the way we were told to run it back in the late 70s and 80s just for biological purposes. And I think I made mention in some of my videos that like uh, a person at PetSmart, they had a substrate in their aquariums, which was uh, basically a gravel and not a sand, but more gravel and they had them remove that gravel and they would siphon out the gravel clean the tanks and one of the ladies said now since they removed the gravel from their tanks she says she can see a difference in the quality of the water and everything just from moving the substrate out of those aquariums and now each aquarium does not have a biological filter, but it's depending on a uh, full system to give them their biological filter. And she said she noticed a difference, but this is what she was told to do. So she obeys orders. They were told to remove this gravel out of the aquariums for ease of maintenance. So she did it. Now they have a biological problem. Okay, enough said about that. But anyhow, um, I thought I'd read these two emails to you. Uh, let's see. Panagoitis. Uh, I believe that's his name. Don't ask me to say his last name. Panagoitis is his first name. I, I knew a fella when uh, I went to Thailand. and He was born and raised in Thailand. And uh, his name was Lippy Pippy Pipot. Okay, now that's a mouthful for a last name. And uh, this guy has a name that's, that's almost like uh, uh, Lippy Pippy Python. Okay, and that's a very common name apparently in Thailand, that last name. But anyway, I'm going to read you his letter. I thought it was important. Um, I'm trying, I will try to go through the letter as smoothly as I can. You have to remember these uh, 
are from other countries and and there may be things uh, uh, that maybe aren't as smoothly written as we would write them here in the United States. Okay, because that's just the way it is. But anyhow, it's nice getting these emails from people and, and I know I'm behind on them. And I think you guys like listening to these emails from other people. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Noek, I hope my mail finds you well, which it does. I saw your video with photos and I have sent you that I have sent you. And because I think my English is not that bad. No, his English is not that bad. His writing is really not bad at all. Really. So he's, he's pretty good. Uh, I said to make the follow up in order to make clarification on my previous mail, how I set up my tank by following your method and adding uh, and additions I made because uh, I've already seen amazing results. So that's why I thought this is an interesting email because he's done things a little different and which is good thinking out of the box. We don't have to always think in the box. We're not always, you know, you have to do it this way. You can kind of think out of the box, which he is doing. Let's see how I set up my tank. I added a plenum covered with ground fabric like you have suggested in your videos many times. So I, I only do that because uh, even if you now can make a plenum like they showed in Brazil just out of pipe work, okay, and you decide to add, let's say, some some clay pebbles or something so deep to cover up the pipework, I would still add maybe screening or a mesh on top of that so other substrates won't migrate all the way through. If you, you get what I mean? So let's say if you, you made a plen plenum out of PVC piping and you drilled holes in it like I showed in my video from Brazil, uh, that will work. And then you can take your main pipe that goes up. You That way, if you make your own, you can put the piping anywhere you want. And in fact, you can uh, spray the pipe that comes up with a fusion spray. Just make sure it dries for seven days and you'll be able to use that as your pipe, which you won't be seen if you have a black background. Or if you have a blue background, you could spray it to match your background. I noticed that fusion spray works pretty good once it's cured onto the PVC pipe. Um, and then you can use that as a bubbler or put it on a power head or something to turn it down, depending on how, how big your tank is. So there's lots of ways of doing it. And then you can add a clay or you can have lava rock or whatever and cover it, you know, maybe... Uh, if you're using half inch or three quarter inch pipe, whatever you're using, and you drill your holes in it and cap off the ends, uh, it will still make a plenum. And then you're going to put your mesh on top, whether it be that uh, that mesh that they use for crafts, or whether it's just going to be screening from the hardware store that you get for screen doors, and then put that on top. Then start adding your other substrate on. Very simple, very inexpensive. All you're doing is buying PVC pipe. And you have a little bit of work of drilling and deciding where you want your uplift tube to go, how high you want it. Because uh, just with a little bit of thinking, it doesn't take much to get something like that going. So uh, let's go on with this. First, I added a layer of uh, Eero pebbles. These are pebbles from clay. It is baked at 1,200 uh, degrees Celsius or uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So, like I said, he, he uses little round pebbles to first cover up everything. Second layer to cover the clay pebbles. Antipokite is... Uh, a sky clay would be more what we would use, uh, which is full as fuller, fuller earth is what it is. And uh, atypokite is basically the same thing as uh, polygorskite. It's 
the same clay. You know what I mean? It has basically the same elements in it, in it with the magnesium and stuff like that. And uh, but we in the United States would probably say uh, polygorskite clay. Okay, so which is Fuller's Earth? Because a lot of people ask me that. They said, "Well, can I use uh, Fuller's Earth?" Well, a lot of clays fall into Fuller's Earth. So of course you you can use a lot of Fuller Earth uh, clays. A uh, third layer was kitty litter sprayed with Flourish iron. So he put some kitty litter down there. So you can see he's building up different kind of, of layers. Fourth layer was peat moss soil with magnesium sulfate, potassium, calcium carbonate, and sodium bicarbonate. Okay. He says, I have very soft acidic water. Uh, yeah, in very soft acidic water, a lot of people have to uh, add calcium of some sort, almost like um, if you have very acidic water, a lot of people will even use a substrate that's more for saltwater aquariums that has a lot of calcium in it, okay, to solve their problem of such acidic conditions, okay, so um, not unusual. If, if you need it to make an acidic tank more alkaline. You could just add the substrate like they do for uh, saltwater aquariums or your mini reefs or your, what? because that substrate is designed to break down and add calcium back to the tank. A fifth layer was sand, four to six millimeters. Uh, now the comparison between the tank with Father Fish's method and a tank with your method. So what he does is he has a, a, a large tank. He said the tank, which is 120 gallon, that was made according to Father Fish's instructions, has all these elevated nitrates. Depending on the case, they can be between 150 to 450 parts per million. So he made a Father Fish's aquarium and his nitrates are well, they're skyrocket. Between 150 to 450 parts per million, that is extremely high, 450 parts per million. Please note that I feed the fish in the tank sparingly, a maximum of only three times a week. Does this sound familiar, how you get people that make these elaborate tanks and uh, they barely feed the fish and they barely have any fish in them? And basically, they're, you know, planet tanks. They're not far fish. And I've even seen them where they even admit they only feed them like every other day, every three days. So, okay. So he feeds them three times per week. This is a huge fail for me. I can't control the nitrate levels, even with water changes. And that's a shame because uh, I know if he has a 120-gallon tank, Father Fish's method, uh, if I recall, is at least six inches of substrate, at least six inches of substrate, adding different things, and uh, yeah, that would be that would be a mess at a 120 gallon tank to pull all that out of there and try to get things straightened up. But as you can see, he's he's not doing well with that tank. Okay. The small tank, a 20-gallon tank, which I'll show you a picture of, okay, that I made following your method from your video. And by feeding daily the fishes a decent amount of food on purpose, has nitrates of 0 to 5 parts per million without water changes. Livestock in the 20-gallon tank with the plenum. Uh, male betta, three female bettas. Eight neon tetra, six quarry julii, ten snails. Uh, loaches, the loaches are in there. I'm surprised the loaches don't eat the snails. Okay. <laughs> Usually loaches will go after your snails. Anyhow, uh, I think that is safe to say that your method is working perfectly from day one. I am sending you a photo which I'm showing you the photo 
uh, I'm sending you a photo of the tank with the plenum exactly how it is today. Thank you very much for your time and your help. Your video is invaluable, and I hope soon you will reach bigger uh, audience. Well, me too. Thank you very much. It, it is almost impossible to remove everything from the big tank that was made according to Father Fish's method and start all over again. But I have made medium bags, uh, BCB bags, with kitty litter and iron and added them to the canister filter. From what I saw in your video, it will take four to six weeks to grow anaerobic bacteria and see results. I will send you an update if I see any changes. So what he's kind of doing, um, in case you're new here, I've talked about BCB bags are, you can make a plastic thing or a bag, you put it in your sump, you can put it in your canister filter, and uh, this will, then create anoxic conditions, which will help with nitrates. Anyhow, that is all from him. Uh, in one country he's from, I don't know, he doesn't say, and I have forgotten. And Panagoitis, I hope I'm saying his name right. I want to thank him uh, for sending me a letter. Now this next letter, uh, that I got is from the United Kingdom. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, part two will be about keys uh, questions. That will be in part two. <clears throat> and he is from the United Kingdom. But anyhow, I want to thank you for watching. And um, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy fish keeping. And I hope you enjoyed the video.